It has finally arrived and we can't wait to test this beast. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode our Orion XS, the, the uh, DC to DC charger has finally arrived. We've been waiting for months for these things. Everybody has been waiting for these things to arrive and they are now rolling out from Victron. So in this episode we are going to be comparing just uh, Looking at the two, the original Orion versus the, the new XS, looking at the sizes, what kind of cables go in, you know, what they weigh, all that sort of stuff. So get to it, shall we? So this is the original Orion TR Smart, the 12 in 12 volt, 30 amps. This is the popular one that we put in, in many, many motorhomes and van conversions. And uh, you, you don't put this one in boats because it's non-isolated. But yeah, this one is used in a lot of different places. And it has been basically probably one of the highest selling items of, we've installed so many of these, it's incredible. So we've all been waiting for this, this guy to arrive. And finally, it is here now. Looking forward to going through the um, sort of form factor differences with you. We'll be doing then another video where we actually put these into action and we're, we're going to show you this running off. We'll probably connect it to my Toyota Hilux and charge a battery. That for a while with this and then use this and show you the differences between them. But we're really looking forward to uh, working with this and, and looking forward to installing this into vehicles now. It, it is quite a bit more expensive. I think this one is, well, how much does this cost? About 170 and this is about 300-ish. Yeah, so, so you know, this is about double the price of this, but then it is not far off being double the capacity of this. So let's, let's go through it. Right, I'm going to start with the weight first, just because this one is actually so much heavier. And it's always in my mind when I pick them up, the difference in weight. So let's... Put a scale here to try and put it so that you can actually see the uh, the screen and this one comes in at uh, 1.7576 and this one comes in at 340 grams ish this is pretty good i mean this is way way lighter than the other one interestingly enough a lot of that weight on the original Orion is taken up by the just the structure of the cooling fins and that. Uh, I bet this adds quite a chunk to the weight. This interestingly enough has no cooling fins. Apparently they have achieved 95 or even a higher percentage efficiency with this and therefore it doesn't just doesn't heat up whereas this one we know does heat up. Anybody who's installed this will know that it gets pretty hot. If you wanted to run at full capacity always you need to place a fan somewhere to keep this thing cool because as it gets hot it starts self-regulating and, and charges at a lower rate. So that's going to be really interesting if this thing can always charge at its full full rate. So as you can see, very different sizes. This is much smaller than this, much lighter we've seen. One of the other things that I find really interesting, obviously, is this is IP43. So you, you cannot mount this in any way that there is moisture. So you wouldn't mount it in an engine compartment, for example, in a vehicle, just too much moisture, you know, heat and, and moisture. Whereas this is IP65, in theory, you could mount this thing in an engine compartment. I mean, I'm not sure you'd want to because of the heat and everything else, but it is pretty much waterproof. So that's one of the huge differences between them. That said, in most motorhomes, then when we mount them in lockers, that wouldn't make any difference. Right, on this one here, you basically got an on-off here and a Bluetooth thing here. Whereas this is giving you a bit more information, so it's showing you bulk absorption float. It still has Bluetooth connectivity, obviously, you can see by the little Bluetooth emblem there. But it's actually showing you at which stage it is. With this one, you'd have to go onto the app to see what it's actually doing, really. Whereas this, you can see that. So in terms of connectors, as you can see, these have the old square-shaped connectors where you would typically use a 16mm cable with a ferrule on it, get a square crimper to go with a ferrule, and this then fits in nice and snug. Uh, it, it, that works pretty well. This, according to the spec sheet, is a 25mm. It's, it, it, it's, not, it's got a different connector to this in that this you'd have a, a completely round and you've got a little screw that goes down onto the cable. So probably get a really good connection. We'll be trying it out to see what size ferrules you can and can't put in with this. Obviously you wouldn't use a square ferrule crimper to go with this. You would use a probably a hex crimper 
for you putting a ferrule onto here. So in, in terms of the connectors, this has also got this little cover. I'll just take it off quickly. As you can see, this cover is also used to keep the cable to, to press against, the cable presses against these little ridges here. And so that clamps the cables in place. So they shouldn't come out anyway. You should fasten them in such a way that they don't come out, but they do help to relieve some stress on that. So quite a handy feature. A lot of guys quite like that. They, both of these have the normal remote. So this has still got the remote with an L and H and this one, the standard remote with L and H so that you can connect it to a D plus. We'll be looking forward to testing that out to see if it works just the same as the original Orion. And then one more thing that this has that the the old TR doesn't have, which is the VE Direct connection. So we're going to be looking forward to connecting this to a Serbo GX just to see exactly what information is reported to the Serbo. Might be quite handy to know on the Serbo exactly how much power is coming from the engine into the batteries. Uh, at the moment, the only way to do that is to work with your shunt, have everything else off, basically run the engine and uh, whatever is going to the battery at that stage is what uh, is being produced from the engine through the the Orion DC DC. Now with the new XS you'll be able to see exactly with the VA Direct see exactly what's coming out there. I'm also really looking forward to seeing in Victron Connect exactly what this looks like because maybe it also tells us there. Very, very small screws that can hold this in. This is way more substantial and you have to have um, fairly decent screws that go in there. These you'll be able to use pretty small screws uh, and, and because it's so light they can be very short so very easy to mount this into lockers of motorhomes that have sort of nine mil ply which is typical you're always worried about the screws poking out into out the other end and you know spoiling the motorhome so this is going to be easier to mount we'll get a bunch of screws that once the screw is in place probably with a flat head and have it so that it just extends out by about seven mils and that'll help to mount this and it being so light it'll be really great to mount that. Right so I just wanted to take you through what this actually looks like now that we've received it up to now we've just been looking at literature and, and uh, looking at the Victron uh, site to see what this is all about. Now that it has actually arrived it's it's quite good to see what it really looks like how much it weighs and and how they've uh, set, it, set it up in terms of their form factor. We will be in the next episode we'll be uh, running these off air vehicle charging a battery just to see how this performs and then compare this with that. Look at the, the, the actual functionality that we have in the software for this, what kind of reporting. And we'll be connecting this onto our display board and that'll be connected to a Serbo GX. So we'll be able to see what kind of information this reports to a Serbo GX. So really looking forward to that. We'll be I'm guessing that Victron will be playing catch up with all the, the many, many pre-orders that uh, people had with these. So we've had our first batch arrive and hopefully they'll start rolling off the production line nice and quickly because I think many, many people are waiting for this little device now. So it's available for pre-order still and we're hoping that within the next month we'll be catching up on all of the pre-orders that we've had and uh, start really selling this in our shop. So we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.